This man is the most. Hope you know. Hello, everyone. Today's a special live. It'll be a short one. Oh, today we're going to see the Japan Expo fight. For those of us that were not able to go and see it, it happened last weekend. It was, and now is a good occasion to show the fight. Special fight that we will also be able to discover at the convention. Ooh. But it's also the opportunity to go back on the fight and explain what has, what they've been able to develop. They have a little sound delay. There are no Twitch drops. No. That was only during the Japan Expo to celebrate that with us. But no, there is no drops today. Nice. <laughs> right, perfect. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Today is the opportunity to present the Japan Expo fight to see what has been able to develop the team has been able to develop and then give us some commentary so have you been there I he's been there for four days he's seen the fights he got lots of anecdotes feedback and lots of things to share about the fight today wow they still have a sound delay that they're trying to battle Laniel, the French streamer, had the, the top score. He tried so many times, yet he didn't manage to be number one. There's two types of people. Uh, people who were afraid to not get the minimum score to get the, um, the card, the scratch card. And others who were aiming for a... Yeah. They heard all sorts of accusations, the RNG spells and things like that, but yeah. If you wanted to do the top scores, there was some combination of spells that worked better than others, but yeah. He saw a sentence. He saw a sent he saw a sentence on the chat. Do not sell or buy the cards uh, in uh, one of the websites called the Bon Coin. It doesn't work for anything. 80 euros per card being sold. What the hell is that all about? And the other thing is they will be available at the convention. So four of you who come, they will be able to get cards. And also the loots, the card themselves, the cosmetic stuff that we put during events will always be available after some months. I've spoken a lot with some players during the Japan. It is peculiar to see the most, some of the rarest items in the game, but we always integrate them. And it will be rare drop. I have to speak with Cool to figure out how to augment the drop rate because it's a bit too low. We spoke with Last Baroudeur, for example, during the Shadow Live, and there were loads of try others who loved the rare drop, but the drop rate is too low, inaccessible for most people. Save the 80 euros. Someone is saying in the chat, Feral, save the 80 euros. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so use the 80 euros to go to the convention and get the card and have an experience instead of just buying it on a website. Shall we just go straight on the fight now then? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready for it. Let's go, let's go. We know that you're so numerous that weren't able to come to the Japan Expo. And you have to know that Rebek worked so hard for his speech at the to the point where at the end... <laughs> uh, were you able? Are you able to present the fight in less than one than one minute and use your best salesman voice? Right. Let's let's do it in one minute. <laughs> the, generally, players would come in waves, and sometimes you have three, four that have already done the fight, so I did not need to present the fight. But other times you had new people, so I had I was hard at work trying to explain the fight, and because there were so many subtleties in the fight, it was a bit frustrating to do. Uh, to queue and then do the fight. So I tried to summarize everything to a sort of minimum so there are no surprises in the fight. So there it is. The Japan Expo fight. What is it? What I'd say to people. I would, first I would ask them, do they know the game? Because what you need to know, I've said it Sunday, 
about 10, 15 people, 15% of people who were there never played. And there was an anecdote where a mother played with her son, but she only did breathing between midnight and 3 a.m. and just picked up the babies. So that's all she did. <laughs> no fights, no nothing. So there are always a bit of presentation to do to explain and bring the fight to people. So, yeah. So you have one person looking and one person fighting. And then the invert. So there's a bit of coaching that happens then. So for people who know, there's two novelties in the fight. The first one is the score of the fight. It's a new functionality that we... So when you deal one damage, you get one piece of score. If you do 500 damage, you get 500. <laughs> Good math, French math. And then the score at the end translates to a um, reward. The first threshold, we've made it sort of accessible for everyone so that everybody who tries it gets. So for 20,000 and plus, you get a 20 year poster, this thing. I know that, that we still have many of them around, so we should be able to redistribute at the convention. At 30,000 and plus, we get the stamp, what we call the Necropass. This thing right here. Ah, yeah, there it is. Let, let's, let's break the setup and show you. So, yeah. So you have three areas, three games, three stamps. But you needed to reach 30,000 for Wakfu, Dofus, and Waven. If you reach... If you get the stamp on all three, then you get a card for each and other rewards. For the first 30,000 points, for the most people, was 40,000. If you reach 40k, then you get a, a card that you could scratch and get the Locust Shield, which we will be giving away one of those uh, tomorrow. There was a... Um, the best score had 30 days of subscription to win. But the best reward that you can't buy or redeem is the fame, the eternal fame. We had some really cool scores. Our scores internally, the team, we reached 120. That was our average, our sort of best score. But on the first day, someone reached 130 and we were blown away. <laughs> and we also have to tell you that there was more than one attempt to reach that score. So people had to learn the game and find. So if you wanted to get the best score for the Japan, you had perhaps to do 15 to 20 attempts, yeah. Top three have all done at least 15 to 20 attempts to get to that score. And it was easier to do on days where there weren't many people around, so Thursday and Friday, yeah. So it depends on the influence, how many people are in the stands, largely tr translated to how many attempts one could do. Shall we go to the client directly? No, no, no. There is a second novelty before we go to the fight. Every two turns, the fight stops. A new interface comes up and the player has 30 seconds to pick one of three spells that are proposed. Yeah, no matter what, the stop, the fight stops and you have to pick them. So every two levels, there's 16 total spells. So even if you did the fight multiple times, you had a bit of an RNG, which means you don't always get the same combination of spells. Yeah. The idea was to design it so that two attempts never look the same. Yeah. So you, ha you can't build a strategy reliably and beat this guy. Always were thrown off. Yeah. And now I wanted to end on something. The player does not play their class. Everyone plays the same... Uh, character so you don't have to worry about gear uh, theory crafting and stuff like that so it allows you to do fights faster you sit and start doing fights whereas old fights you had to sit down pick a character pick gear and it time consuming and that wasn't the most interesting thing about the gameplay so we've designed it so you can focus on the fight only and the other thing is uh, all characters are unlockable and you gain one ap every turn so you do more the further you go and also, I forgot to say, there's an NPC at the top of the map. There's three lines of dialogue. This is just to show you the new type of scen sceneries that we can include in dialogue and stuff like that. It allows us to see. It, it didn't prolong the fight, but it allowed us to showcase what we were able to do. Let's switch to the fight. This is what it looked like for people who were at, you know, at the Japan Expo. What a lovely transition. So, at the Japan Expo, the moment you arrived, this is what you saw which is quite, quite beautiful. It allows you to see everything we've added, animation style, the fluidity of the game. A lot of people have asked the same question about the 
the machine uh, stats, like the gear that we were using. You've seen this in the fight. There are no graphics card on any of the fights that on any of the machines that we've had. They were all running on a CPU, and it flows marvelously, as you can see. This is Unity Gluto. Uh, there is no headset, so you couldn't get the audio vibes as well, sadly. We've removed it from this client in particular, but you will be able to discover all the new sounds and stuff like that when you put your hands on it on the 13th. Uh, we didn't have um, headsets because of hygiene questions, uh, theft questions. We've, we've had that happen a lot in the past, so we tried to go on something a bit more simplified. So there's a lot of novelty. The first character that you can see here is, as Rebecca was saying, we've done something quite special in that. This entity, this character that we've added, can have all the animations of all characters and spells in the game. No, it's not the 20th class. <laughs> we say it internally as a joke, but it's definitely not the 20th class. It's just something that we've created specially for Unity for this fight, so that later on, you can learn new spells in the fight and use all of them. And the character can evolve throughout the fight as well. It's something that we've never been able to do on Flash. We were limited there by the spells, the base spells for every class. Whereas here, you can evolve throughout the same fight, acquire spells that are not particular to that class. So we were able to showcase the animations and a panel of things that you're able to do. As Rebex said, novelty. For those of you that did quest, the NPCs, you can add some acting on them. This is the first time we're testing it. We wanted to see it on the Japan client that we have this. The first sort of tests of what we're able to do. So the NPC is giving you indications to send you in some areas, some acting, emotes, uh, whether they're upset or... So it just adds and enhances the interaction with the NPC. So animations are simply indications to avoid being blocked and not knowing where to go or uh, having to open a browser to know where to go especially. So here the NPC for example shows you the direction with their finger but it could be any sort of scenarization later on that will give you useful indication for something. And it works well because we know there's, there's an enormous number of quests in the game and finally being able to have a first degree scenarization that stops you opening a browser, it's just pretty, yeah. So, at the second map, you've understood it. Necropass, it's the pass, uh, it's the theme of uh, this year. So, very quickly, let's get started with the fight. I will start the fight just before I wanted to, you to know that at the Japan, we wanted you to know that the person would have fun but also the rotation between people were quite fast and that's why there were two lines of dialogues and two maps and there were practically all uh, interfaces were locked and only these ones the essential ones were kept so that you're able to focus on the fight and test unity and that your game session is not 30 40 minutes because we had a large number of people so the idea that we had was to make sure that People sat down for 10 minutes, did the fight and left. So now, I'm going to do a very quick live in English, but also just to tell the international community they will have English streams soon. I forgot to specify in the presentation, but the character starts with two spells at the start. You have a X-shaped, um, and the other one is a linear one that pushes and deals damage, which allows you to do some good areas of effect. So it's good at the start, and then very rapidly, when you have a coin throw turn two, you gain new spells, and it becomes a bit more obsolete. The very biggest new mechanic is every two turns you have this new interface that pops up 
And as you can see, the idea is to allow you to choose a spell from a character. And then he picked coin throw. So this spell was used to do a lot of... Uh, so it's a mono, mono target, but steals life and allows you to gain one AP every time you cast it. Yeah, twice a turn. 10%. And it, and it augments your damage from afar. It's a really good spell and it has been used a lot to break the records. Yeah, and it allows you to boost yourself and do a lot more. All we need is an AoE sort of spell and let's, let's get to it now. The objective, the basic objective is to reach the max score. You can see here at the top, I'm at 10,500. It will improve, but the thing is, there will be monsters that will come. The more turns you go, the more map, the more uh, mobs will appear. And the idea is not to get overwhelmed. I will pick a spell. C carry on, Rebecca, tell us. For people who have never done this fight or have never played Dofus, I have a few um, adv pieces of advice. You can easily get submerged and surround it. Uh, it's good. So for this kind of fight, it's good to have some lifesteal. Uh, mono target, like a coin throw, coin toss. It's good it's, if, it's had, if it has good effects. But if there's too many mobs around, it's really good to have AoE spells because it allows you to do more damage overall. And the idea, as I said, is to try not to die. <laughs> try not to die. Even though the score at the start is not great but more towards the end starting from turn eight you get more powerful spells a lot more ap and then you can aoe more and um, deal more damage you get more points towards the end of the fight anyway yeah so the idea is to take your time and make sure you never get submerged so run around position yourself well there were some synergies as well between spells like some that allowed you to gain mp and others that make it so that Every time you use an MP, your damage increased. So there were some beautiful synergies that could be found. Known very well that here, we haven't used it now, but in this interface, you have multiple options in the future and you can put conditions. If you have spelled this, if you pick this spell in turn two, then, then you are likely to get the this one in turn four that will be proposed, which is more interesting and synergized. So it allows us to guide players as we go. Pandora box is quite good. It's AoE. Every time enemies that I've hit use MP, they will get damaged as well. I don't like this one. It's too far, but let's get rid of him. Here, knowing very well, you can see under the score a little, uh, a little skull that tells you how many Necroms will appear next turn. Normally, they are dependent on the score or the number of damage that you've dealt. So the higher your damage the more Necroms will appear. That will appear, yeah. That would be incredibly cool, uh, Gluto. We will pause the game. You have to know that we have an admin command that we can use for some years that we can just pause any fight. But it's the first time that we will pause it so you can see it. And it will allow us to change spells and do things like that. Novel. One of the novelties as well that I wanted to tell you is that you can show screens in different mobs and just spin it here at the top. And every time you hover on top of a mob, it will change. So you don't have to have to memorize, do the effort of memorizing. So the time while you think, I will ask answer a question. Put in break on a fight. We've discussed a lot about this feature, uh, namely because... Um, this is a solo fight, but we can imagine this in a fight with multiple players. And if every time the player has the possibility to pose the fight, then everyone can have a pick of spells. Then the fight is just going to go crazily long. This is why we have a timer. And that's why we're a bit reluctant to allow players to pose fights generally. And this is without even talking about toxic behavior that could appear if we allow people to pose.
Yeah, we can already see it in some sort of uh, case scenarios. We see it in uh, tournaments, for example. And as I said, for that window right here is something that you can just put on a side of your screen to always have the information that you want. The uh, tackle, the dodge and stuff like that. This is part of the enhancements that we are adding slowly and incrementally uh, with the interfaces. It, they're massive. As far as we're concerned, they're great life enhancements. And here's another notion that is quite stupid, but allowing your character to go invisible when you hover on top of something that is behind it so that you can see the new one. It's a bit stupid, but it changes a lot of the feel of the game, which allows you PVM-wise to at least have a better legibility of the fight. And I know that typically the question will get asked very quickly about the creature mode or mode no animations. So we have a lot of players try harder as multi-accounters who this is one of the best feedbacks that we got is that at the end of the fight they thought it's so fluid that i did not even feel the need to look for creature mode which it pleased us greatly to say the least <laughs> we will continue to enhance things as they stand but now in on in all honesty it's so fluid that it just brings us and the players great pleasure to and it's part of the feedback that we received repeatedly during the Japan that players were not necessarily scared or terrified after trying it that they are about to lose uh, creature mode uh, 81,000 it's not shameful or anything it's not spectacular or anything but <laughs> great yeah I got the rewards at least but we've had lots of feedback that mention fluidity, the animation, it plays well, the game generally. One of the best feedbacks that we could have ever gotten uh, for multi-accounters or for people who want to speed as, play as fast as possible. It's one of those feedbacks that we loved having during the entire Japan, honestly. We haven't specified as well, but this fight right here, for those of you, the map evolves throughout the fight. Now, I was not intended to do one fight, we will show them that, of course we will show them that, yeah. But for those of you who paid the more attention, I hope that you saw that the map evolved throughout the fight. Those who will say no, I will be very disappointed if you say no in the chat. <laughs> right. There's a lot that I did not notice, uh oh, that's not great. So people have zoned in a lot on the animations and did not pay attention to the thing itself. Yeah, but you see now that the map is sort of in a restful state. Um, you can see the portal is not turbocharged or anything. The movement of the windmills is quite calm. The water is moving all right. The, the whole outlook of the fight is sort of bright. Pay attention to this. I'm hydrating snipes, but you can't see it. <laughs> Hold on. He's reading the spells. He's trying to pick good spells. So an Enutroph, a Fogonaut, and an Echo Flip spell, and he's trying to pick the best ones. Right. He went with uh, Underground. Boom. The animation is so good. Oh my god, look at that, look at that. <laughs> oh, it interrupted them just to show the animation. Uh, chat is asking, are there modifications? You can see some modifications already. So you can see um, the fire damage and stuff like that is uh, added more colors to differentiate the element and stuff. There was a lot of work that was done specifically on the chat. The, the spell is not working very well for this fight, but at least the animation is great. And this is just me talking. Notice how the whole atmosphere has gone a bit darker. The windmills are moving a bit faster. Uh, there's more clouds that appear that up right. He's going fast, but at least the animations are fantastic. The number of animation of spells that we haven't seen yet that we'll discover during the beta. Oh my god. And I want to remind you, it's the 13th of August. Shall we go with Shram spell that reduces resistance and pushes? This is good. Life steal and AoE. Or 
Oh, it gives you an AP and swaps places. Let's go with the... Yeah, let's go with the... Yeah, that's really good. The Kra is very well solicited in this place. What we can do is push that one there. And then you have a good AoE. Holy shit, he's showing off skills. <laughs> Once is enough, but we could do twice. Why the hell not? I don't think that the best score is going to get broken <laughs> in this fight. I, don't, I share you feeling, yeah. I don't think we're there now. At least now we're able to showcase uh, the spells and stuff like that. And at least show you the novelties. The animations are the main event, but yeah. But typically for the interface that we have for picking uh, spells or things that we have created so we'll just be able i won't tell you exactly which features we will take them for but we have the assets now and we can use them later on but so dev side we have plenty of ideas to reuse things like that because it's so versatile but it's also something that we find uh usable in a lot of other circumstances and it was one of the objectives that we had with this client with the, of the Japan Expo, which was to be able to propose new features that later would make it to the game itself. So we've mentioned the evolution of the fight earlier. Look at this. You can already see that the ambiance is getting a bit rougher, uh, more stormy. Oh, new spell. Stratagem. Pandora box. I really like it. Yeah. It hits AoE, and then every time they use MP, they die. Decimation uh, will do damage strength, and then at the end of this turn, they take damage as well. It's just for this fight, I won, yes. Every one damage dealt is one piece of score. So these are some of the spells that were used to get the best score. I'm Sakri. In essence, it would be, sh it would be a shame to not use a Sakri spell. But here we are. We've talked about it as well, and I thought it would be really important to mention it again. Uh, when we did the conference with Papino uh, on Friday, there were loads of features that were added, but not necessarily the maps that evolve throughout the fight. But they won't be here in all dungeons the moment we release Unity. If we were to add it to the entirety of the maps of Unity, it would take too much time, maybe six months, one year. So that would be like two projects that we wouldn't be able to progress and instead just work on the aesthetics of maps. So we wouldn't be able to work on anything else. And that's why we work in trying to add new features for people that are lacking content right now that, and then go back and work the existing content and make it look better, smoother and stuff like that. The fight is starting to get a bit intense right now. <laughs> Boom, AoE damage. And as we've said, the number of skulls here at the top are the number of uh, mobs that will appear in the next wave. And you can see the outline already. Now that we're nearing the 40,000, which is the threshold that we've set, you can see that it's going crazy. Look at the speed of this thing. Look at the thing in the background and how fast the winds are moving and the storm. The water is flowing faster as well. So we've got an Echo Flips fell, a Anaripsa. A sacrifice, but ooh, Jashin's ritual. We haven't picked much from the Echo Flip, yeah. And a rip sorry, Echo Flip. Lamentation. Let's go for Lamentation. Uh, I wanted to say something about the map as well for people who haven't seen it in the first fight and are seeing it now. They see that the quality is quite you can see that the quality of the work is incredibly well and good. Thanks to the people who have made it happen. Low battery, holy shit. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's something that is quite immersive in the fight, but we don't want it to be too overpowering. That's the only thing that you can see. There's a balance to be found. We don't want to add lightning bolts all over the map and all of a sudden you can't see what you're doing and stuff like that. Yes, it's running on a laptop that doesn't have a graphics card. And we want it to be not too overpowering and for the legibility to always be there. We never want you to be in a situation where um, 
uh, you can't read a spell or a mob or something like that because there's too many things going on and this is what we've aimed for. We might not have gotten the balance perfectly right for this first try, but this is a showcase of what can be done. The rest we can go back. All I can say is it will be a fantastic update. The legibility of the fight is the most important thing when, and dynamism as well, the fluidity of the fight are our key things. So animations and things in the background, we never want them to be the main thing we are we have been very attentive to things like that so even the spell animations themselves we don't want them to be grandiose and things like that <coughs> so it's something that we've talked about the animations we have more tools internally so that animations can cut quickly and faster we're more malleable here so if you have animations that are quite long uh, with embranchment so chains of damage that happen later on we've paid special attention to this in the beta uh, because we haven't redone the entire animations just to lose fluidity in this one fight. It doesn't make sense at all. But here again, please give us all of your feedback during the beta. Because the objective and the goal is to keep a dynamic fight. That's the strength of Dofus, is to have fluid, dynamic fights. And it would be a shame to lose that. It would be a shame to lose dynamism on this. I... <laughs> I'm getting worse here. What the hell? <laughs> I've picked some good spells and stuff like that. What? So, Potato Pock, this is a class that is agnostic. It's something that they've been able to do with Unity, which is create a class that has all the spells and all the animations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's try and beat. Let's, let's try and regen more and do things better. This is one thing I really noticed that is cool. This button right here. It's so fluid. You can put it anywhere you want. It's not fixed in the map. You can't change it. We've showed this case of um, the, the idea of the modularity of um, interfaces. We're paying special attention to this. We have, we have redone most of the interfaces. So we've decided to make them all modular. Look at this. You can see there's a little setting piece that you can uh, pick from. For every little bar, you have a little setting cog, and then you can look at how much customization you have. You can make it bigger, small, uh, the HP bar right, left. I'm not going to show you everything now, but it's good to just reinforce the idea that we've put so much effort into redoing the interfaces, things that are interesting for you. So you can put the information that is more essential to you, whether you're PvP or PvM in, highlight that and put it in place and customize it. At the Japan Expo, every fight technically hosted a new player, so it was rather useless. It did us a disservice to save the interfaces position for every person. So they reset after every fight, so every new person could customize them and make what they want with them. So as I was saying, it really allows us to have more options of presentation. I'm showing you this one, for example. Small, module. So you can have a... Uh, better visibility if you are hard of sight for example uh, the positioning you've seen that a lot but the interface itself every single one you will have a lot of customization on every single one of them individually and all of them collectively in which ones you want to see which ones you don't want to see how big you want all of them to be and where you want them to be something i've mentioned at the japan expo that you might have seen it's at the level of the uh the ergonomy of um, the movements that the character can do with their MP and stuff like that. For those who played Waven, there's a lot of similarities you will have seen. So Waven is the same uh, company as Ankama. We exchange feedback. We see what works in games, what doesn't work. We, ch we share best practices, we share knowledge. And it's one thing that we, s we have seen work so well in Waven and we've integrated it here. So it's the white uh, navigation cell that you can see there. And it shows you where the character will go much easily. We are towards the end of a phase of the better development right now as it stands. And there's there's a lot of things that we want to enhance. And that, so that means, what it means for you is there are a lot of things that you will have seen now, that we will have told you about that you shouldn't take for gospel. They will not be there forever. We are awaiting your feedback 
a lot of things will change. So many of you have spoken about the DA, the artistic duration, direction of the new interfaces. It's something that we're always working on. We're, we know there's some enhancements to make during the beta. If you tell us there are some, then we will pay special attention to that and add them. And now it's the crossbell. Yeah, that, that looks good. So we've talked we've talked with Wakfu about their uh, and ever since we've started mo the hero mode we've asked uh, Wakfu about it to have implemented it and they've told us about all the problems they faced with it and I, we've mentioned that we share best practices and this is part of it is knowing what the problems we are likely to face so Wakfu for example have worked on this one feature for over a year so it's not just because we're in 24 we can just implement it out of nowhere on the office uh, the game is evolving in a certain direction without the hero mode but as I've said it is a piece of work that has taken over a year of work so that Waven was able to implement it. So it's something that I've mentioned earlier. The research and development phase is highly important. We are checking with the team. We're estimating how long it's going to take. The real feasibility or not of a hero mode in Dofus. Is it even desirable? Is it even something that we want? So it's, some, it's something that we're thinking about and seeing if we can evolve in that direction for Unity. So it's something that we're evaluating. It's not something that we're working on. It's something that we're evaluating. Because some things that are at the very basic... Oh, I'm going to show you the new explosive. It's one of the most important spells in Dofus. Look at that damage, look. <laughs> so, I played terribly there. Uh, should have put that one to share damage on top of explosive. Yeah, it's talking and playing at the same time. It's not evident. Yeah, yeah it's really hard. It's not so evident. So, as I was saying about the hero mode, we are thinking about how much it's going to cost us, uh, how long it's going to cost. It's something basic for the development of the entire project. Yeah, it touches the classes, it touches pretty much everything that is basic in the programming of the game. So we are very careful about how we implement it and if we implement it. About the Japan Expo, I've mentioned the ergonomy. The hero mode is not more important than having ergonomical features that allow you to play multi-account smoothly and better. So that's our top priority. So we don't want so people who use uh, Alt Escape, for example, to have to change uh, screens and stuff, uh, inventories and things like that. Yes, yeah, so the hero mode would allow us to fix things like that, but before anything it's quests uh, there's a lot of complex areas we have to think about so if the hero the ergonomy if it answers all of these needs fantastic but if we can have these ergonomical changes that enhance your play style that makes faster things then we will prioritize that rather than not give you any enhancements or betterments now and keep working on a future thing that will be brilliant so so it's a change of this course, you will have noticed, yes, but it's for a good reason. Because for me, it's really important to prioritize these things for multi-accounting rather than go prioritize the hero mode first. Another time, terrible score. I'm fed up with this. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Oh, reopen the end of fight interface. There it is. So we haven't talked about this. We've not mentioned, we've just... This is the first time we've, present, we've presented it during the conference on Thursday, but for people who have not seen the live for over a week, this is the first time that you see in this interface right here. This is the new interface. So, first of all, there will be more tabs than you can see now. So we've made a focus on the character now, just for the Japan Expo. We've put the emphasis on the character, the score, so we did not need to put stats and stuff like that directly into this interface. This is the kind of stuff that you will see at the beta, they will be available. But this interface is one of the interfaces that you see the most in the game, that has evolved very little since we've started. And I don't want to say more than I should, but we recently um, added that little reduce feature where you collapse it. That was one of the last, last modifications we brought to it. But I'm hovering on top of this. And you can see it's given me some more information. 
Oh yeah, these are just things that we've added to show us that you've won the fight and stuff like that. Uh, the enemies, the estimated value, the cameras that you won. And as we've said, the summary and stats, we've grayed them out now. But when, during the beta, you will have a lot more stuff to see there. Uh, you'll be able to click them and see detailed summaries of the fight and stuff like that. So it's, it's a really cool interface that we've spent a lot of work on. Um, uh, because it was a big piece of work, if you think about it. It's one of the interfaces that you see the most. So it only made sense that we spent the amount of time we've spent to make it as good as it is. So you can have incredibly detailed stats and stuff like that. How much total damage you've dealt, damage received. Um, yeah, whether you've won or lost, you'll be able to get all these this kind of information. So when you are as part of a team, you'll be able to evaluate each other better. <laughs> uh, there's a question I've seen pass in chat just now. It's a question of the end of fight interface in pvp so we've we've m talked a lot about this internally just between us um in pvp this question poses itself a lot more um so toxic behaviors tend to appear when you have a lot more de details so if you're doing 3v3 and then you can easily get harassed because you have dealt the least damage or then it's presumed that you've played the least if you show the heals damage these are things we can quantify but placement is not something that we can mention the contribution the states that you apply that help or don't help a fight progress it's not something that we can capture and show you this is just to reduce the performance of a character or a player to how much damage they dealt or how much heals they've given is absurd it's extra stats that we've given but if we add it in PvP, it's a question that we are asking ourselves. Will we be opening the door to more toxic behavior by giving people the tools to hit each other with? <laughs> Let's go with the Entour Loop. Oh. Yeah, let's go with the cross spell that damages and heals at the same time. It pushes twice. Oh, when it heals. Oh. Why is that? That was a weird interaction. So even here, I'm not saying that in PVM, there, there are also times where, um, uh, where we see some toxic behavior in fights as well. We talk about PvP now because it's one of the things that is the most competitive in the game. So that's where there is the most um, toxic behavior, where the emotions run high. But... I have spent most of my time as a player in PVM. Uh, PVM is not exempt from toxic behavior. It may be even because that's where there's most comments to make. Sometimes that's where most of the rubbish takes place. If you if you waste or fail a challenge of your entire team at the last turn, you're gonna get it. <laughs> yes, uh, failing challenges and things like that tend to attract negativity and animosity. Yeah, insults and things like that. So starting from the moment that there is someone that dares have animations during a fight where people have no animations on, people get upset and you know that very well. So we're very well aware of these things. We wanted to provide as many statistics as possible while still keeping in mind the ramifications of whatever it is that we add. And it's a question I'm asking to the IT. Are you able to do a poll in chat to ask people what they think of the end of fight stats if we were to bring them to PvP as well? Feral, Feral is making a joke. He said, personally, if you fail the child in the last turn, I will not only insult you, but I will report you to the FBI and all the authorities to get you locked up. <laughs> uh. We haven't seen. So he's picking a Zellor spell to showcase it. To see the animation and what it looks like. Oh, that Telefrag. So we have to know, I'm uh, allowing myself to talk about the Unity client here very quickly. Here the 
tests that we have done in the Japan uh, reassured us that the fight itself could be one of the um, gameplay elements that are more central. And the fact that it worked very well for four days is reassuring for me. The number of fights were incredible. This is the most critical feature of the game. It's being inside the fight, the animations, and it worked superbly well for four days. We didn't have a single problem. So we're reassured on that sense. So we can't say that all of the um, feedback was unanimously great, but most of them, I'd like to say 95, 96% were mwah, fantastic. Most people are looking forward to test, put their hands on them. A lot of people were not able to get separated from the stand, leave it, because they were so hooked on the fluidity, the lovely feel of the game. They were just doing it on, the re on repeat and stuff like that. And for those of you that were incredibly try-harders, they were gunning for scores, it was a real, real pleasure for, you to, for us to see you discover all of them. So people do want to see, seemingly most people want to see incredibly detailed stats brought to PvP. What do you guys think? Uh, uh, we made sure during the Japan Expo, uh, so we did one card per day per person to avoid people hoarding them and having loads of them. That's something that we've paid special attention to. So at the start we've given a bit more, we wanted to be a lot more generous, uh, but our innocence uh, came back to bite us in the, in, in the behind. <laughs> so we know that throughout the year some people have gone back with 16, 20 cards, 20 cosmetic cards, that's a lot. So. For the first day, I wanted to talk about the um, uh, a special case where there was a group of three to four people, and we've given them about three. There was uh, groups of people that came together and took as many cards as possible from them, so they went away with a good hefty amount. Wow, the functioning of Wrath is peculiar. So all spells, as you will have seen right now, they have different behavior and mecha mechanics. So sometimes the animation that you see for the spell that you recognize is not the same one. So that's that's the case for uh, Iops Wrath. Someone mentioned this on um, the chat. Uh, we, we were running low. We were running low on cards and some people who did good uh, scores, we asked them to use it right now in front of us on their telephones to redeem it immediately because, uh, yeah. So the phenom the phenomenon that we have seen on the first day to get it resold immediately on uh, websites, it, it was just too tiresome for us to deal with stuff like that. So we were a bit more reluctant to give them and we're a bit more demanding to see that people use them, especially during the last day. So yeah, most people, 220 have voted for yes to PvP uh, details. He has seen someone on chat that is asking about the states. Yeah, it's true. There wasn't too many perfect transitions in this conversation. We're sort of all over the place. Uh, we haven't added too many complex mechanics like a uh, uh, panda, big elotrope. Uh, th there's spells that would not synergize with others, for example. It, was, it would bring a layer of complexity that we did not want to bring about. So that's the first point. And the, th the second thing is we didn't want the fight to be overly complex. Not too bad, nearly 80,000, yeah. And we didn't want the fights to be overly complex to manage with too many states on top of their heads and stuff like that. So we've simplified it enough. Do you have any questions before we say goodbye? We've showcased the fight multiple times, so there's a lot of new animations that we wanted to show you, interfaces. 
We've covered a lot of that, the fluidity of the fight, you were able to see it. Uh, I really hope that during August you have a good time testing these things for yourself rather than seeing somebody else try it. Someone is picking up a question from chat. Is a fight of this type um, planned for the Ankama Convention? So for the Ankama Convention, we are preparing new types of fight. And I say in, we are working on it because... Uh, Yes, I voted yes. It's, we're trying to make a new fight for that one, so it's not repetitive for those of you who were in the previous event. I'd like to know what happens to items that are already uh, attached, they have a Mimi Simbic attached. We have a dev blog on cosmetics, so I invite you to go and read it. That was released about one week. There's a lot of information in there. Whether on uh, new interfaces, the Mimisimbics, the costumes. So I can only invite you to go and read that dev blog. I don't have anything new to say about it. There's a lot of questions about the opening of the beta and its functioning. And I will answer the way I've answered during the Japan Expo. We will we will publish an we will publish an article at dev blog to detail the functioning exact detail, the workings of it. We talked about it before. It, the writing of it has started and we will communicate it to you in due time. A revamp of guilds for December with the release. I can't promise you anything. It's a big topic that we're working with uh, game development side, but we can't promise you anything. Our most important priority is the release of Unity is as clean as possible. And we want with the release of the new servers to review certain things uh, that we call game progress. I don't know what he means by that. Um, so you have Incarnum and Astro. There's some things that will be reviewed. Um, yeah, so nothing happening for... Will there be another Unity Live in the pipeline? Nope. Because for a good reason, in less than a month, the beta will be released. So the necessity to have Unity Lives is less present because the 13th of August beta means you will no longer need to hear from us you can just go and test it <laughs> so we've said it multiple times we are looking forward to your feedback and we could have lives afterwards to exchange about what you found interesting and things like that so it will be from the 13th of august until sometime in december and i can't say because that would be giving away the date of the unity release We don't know which question to pick. Uh, we don't want to get too scattered and talk about many things other than the fight that the Japan Expo fight that we wanted to bring to you. Will there be an interest to invest in the beta? Uh, you have to know that there are particular unique functioning of the beta but the main interest is to go and test unity for yourself so for me um for the beta the idea is to see and test the form of the game that's the principal uh chief goal of it and again every player will have their own interest is it gaining information to manage upcoming rushes just check all the new novelties in the game because there will be loads of modifications to do in classes and things like that these will be um in the beta before the production so every single person will have their own agenda uh some will test cosmetics and stuff like that but for now we're going on the principle of organizing as many events during the beta to give you as many opportunities to try various facets of it so the principal interest to reiterate is to help and allow various teams to get feedback from you so we can release the most quality game we can comes December. So 73% of people wanted yeah so it's not the totality of the player that have responded 
but a vast majority have voted yes for the PvP uh, and the fight uh, data. Uh, we're not going to make any decisions on the basis of that poll, but we will look at it later on and think. You've mentioned stress test in Unity beta. So, for this beta, we haven't talked about it uh, just today, earlier today. The beta will be composed in multiple phases. We will describe them in further detail in a newsletter or a dev blog that will come out in two to three weeks to give you the idea of every phase, what we want you to test or what we're keeping an eye on. There will be a stress test phase that will be very quick to, to there is a lot of things that it will be the one of the easiest things to put in place because we can just hype you very quickly by adding stuff and bring a large number of people and see monitor the state of the servers and how they handle it. Unity on phone? No, that will be at least one year, if not more, to start thinking about a mobile version of Dofus Unity. Will the beta be testable in multi accounts? Yep. So we will have multi and mono account servers. Yeah, he's asking, are you going to gift us ochres in the beta? He's like, I'll give you whatever you want in the beta. Just go and test it. <laughs> oh, infinite dreams. Infinite dreams. Yeah, these are some of the systems that we want to go over, but from scratch. Yes, they will have some enhancements. Will it be during December? No, but it's one of the most fundamental systems that we're working on to redo from scratch. Uh, somebody asked about the Ankama convention, what special things do you have? And he just said, come, come and see for yourself. For all the questions about cosmetics, I really do invite you to go to the dev blog. The principal question that remained a bit suspended that we'll have to rethink, even though I don't guarantee that there will be any changes, is the fact to link cosmetics either to a character or to a server. It's something that we're discussing internally because we've seen the feedback that you've sent us. It's something that we are looking to review, but I can't give you any guarantees as it stands from now. That is something that you will see in the beta. Yeah. This is why I wanted to restart this conversation. The technical limitations that you might encounter when it comes to cosmetics and stuff, server character, uh, we will look at it, we will review it, but I can't tell you anything about it right now on top of what's already on the devlog. Good question. About the spells that you've picked in the fight, you have to know that these are spells that were created specially for that fight. So it makes sense that they looked like some spells you recognize, but they did not behave the same way. So for this fight, what you have to know, we had a big board. Uh, here's some spells. Do whatever you want with them. Change the animations, shame the functioning. So they took existing spells, their names, their logos and stuff like that, like Wrath. But it did not mean that these spells are the ones that you will find on the beta. You will find the same spells that you already know that you have now. Is it possible to delete? Ah, would you won't be able to test the beta if you are not subscribed. It's something that they put a special emphasis on to make sure that people who are subscribed have an advantage, like a privilege. We have to stop here so this live does not go any longer than we have. One last, one last, please, please. One, one each, one each, one each. On anything that we want, go on, let's, let's go. Whatever you want. Will there be any registry that will happen for the beta? No. So there's a lot of chances that towards the release of Unity for the new servers, we're thinking about a pre-registry sort of system. Yeah, it makes sense for the end of the year, but not as much for the beta because we want you to test it and we put as little barriers as possible. So sorry for those of you who have heard it a thousand times, but it will be a great conclusion to remind 
the beta is from the 13th of August. We will open it after the update at the afternoon as soon as we can. And, uh, and it will stay open until the actual release of this new version of Unity in December. So more than three months off a beta, unheard of, but there's, we've got so many things to test that it just makes sense. A lot of uh, server schemes, new stuff, fresh start. Uh, so we'll have different timings during the beta. But as I said, to not give away too much, you will have a newsletter that will be circulated very shortly that will give you as much details as possible about this kind of stuff. Yeah, for this very lengthy beta that will last over three months. Let's say goodbye to each other. Thank you for reminding me that my best score was 80,000. I know lots of you were able to do way more. There was a glass ceiling around 85,000, 90,000. That was really hard to go over, but yeah. Thank you very much, Papino. Thank you, Abek, for being here. Thank you all for watching this. And we'll give you a big rendezvous on the 13th with the release of Beta Unity, where you will see the new functionalities, the new interfaces, the fights and give us as much feedback as possible for this new chapter before we do the full porting. I wish you a very good day and see you later all. Ooh. Hey, that was good. That was good. I didn't pay attention to chat much. Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, what did you vote for? I voted for yes for PvP. Give them the information, let them work it out. <laughs> yeah, maybe Telephrax State. No, don't pay attention to anything to do with the fight itself. All the spells were bizarre. Uh, their functioning was changed. So even the Telephrax State, as you know it, was not the same one that he was applying there. Dinox, as you want to the beta, c'est le même jeu ou il y a un peu Unity. Il y a un plus fluide, il y a un peu plus fluide, il y a un visuel. Et vous pouvez le tester sur le 13th of August, donc pas très longtemps. Ils ont mentionné quelque chose sur le game mode, comme ça, comme une chose. Il a mentionné pendant l'introduction, je pense, de la Japan Expo, ou l'un des lives que j'ai tagged le long, où il a donné des impromptu Q&As. He did say that it was one of the things that are most fun. It resembles, uh, what, is, what are they called? The Temporises. But he did not see it happening anytime soon as a feature because they're still focusing on the same things, releasing Unity, making sure it's great, have a fantastic beta, implement all the changes and feedback that we give them. And then when it's finally released, then they will start attacking the big projects like revamping dreams, guilds, alliances, and then they will move on to novelty, new stuff, like new content for PVM. Uh, and then later on in the year, redo the quest fights, redo the animations, you know, the sceneries and stuff like that. NPC behavior. Yeah, hopefully a dream remake would be a dream. <laughs>